<laughs> Hi there. Well, it's old Johnny boy again under the hot lights, so no coat today. Um, the elections are over. Now what? President Obama is re-elected for another four years. So what? Well, most of you who know me know that I wrote a book called America's Two Holy Wars, and in that book that I finished, started it in 2004, finished it in 2010, and now I'm going to add a little addendum because President Obama has been re-elected. Uh, and in my book, though, I, I said all the way through this that he would be an integral part of uh, the end times. Now, when this chap by the name of Mitt Romney came down the turnpike, at first I figured, you know, whatever. Um, the reason I say whatever is I always say this right up to the night before the election was, Lord, you're the one who puts kings or presidents into place and you remove them depending on what your plan is. So I'll be satisfied with the results of the election regardless of the situation. Uh, Romney, even though he's a Mormon and, you know, I may disagree with him on religious um, principles out of God's Word, but the, uh, when I say principles, his moral values are absolutely uh, wonderful. So he was trying to take America down a financial uh, path of well-being and down a moral path which follows the principles outlined in God's Word. And Obama, on the other hand, and three new senators, one of which is Elizabeth Warren out of my state of Massachusetts, have they subscribed to a certain platform that really is anti-God. So you had a guy going this way trying to lead us, and uh, another guy, President Obama, and the three new Democratic senators, plus the other senators that are already there that are Democrats, pushing for their platform or their anti-God um, beliefs. So the point of the matter is that the election result is uh, that America got together and by majority of electoral and maybe a couple of million, whatever it was, votes for the popular vote, President Obama is re-elected for the next four years. So big deal, John. What does that mean? I think it means a substantial uh, setting for the end times. And I'm about to prove that if you want to hang in here with me. So America voted to keep President Obama in office for four more years. And uh, you ask yourself the question, well, will God actually allow people to choose their own king or their own president? Like I said, the Bible actually says in Daniel chapter 2, verse 21, this, let me read it to you. And God changes the times and the season. In other words, his fall, his winter, God's in control of that, the elements and so forth. That is for those of you, 97% of the people on the earth who believe there is a supreme being, a God. Um, God changes the times and the season and God removes kings and God sets up kings or presidents in this case. God gives wisdom to the wise, it says in Daniel 2.21, and knowledge to them uh, that know understanding. So what he's saying here is, I put kings in, I put take kings out. I put presidents in, depending on what my plan and purpose is. But, God always gives his people, you and me, the right to choose. Which path do we want to go down? We choose that when we choose our leaders. And the majority of America chose to go down the path to, I'm pointing to, actually my left, um, that liberal agenda that says, well, I'll read to you what their platform is, but we willingly chose that in violation of what God said in 2 Chronicles 7.14. Let me read that for you. God said this, if my people, that means, uh, you say, well, who are my people? You mean Israel? No, God says, if my people who are called by my name, well, God's name is embodied in this thing called righteousness or holiness. So if my righteous people, called by my name, shall humble themselves, in other words, 
bow down before and worship Almighty God and pray and seek my face, God says, if these people, my people, would humble themselves, seek my face, call my name, and uh, turn from their wicked ways toward righteous ways, then I will hear from heaven their prayer, and I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. So let's read that conversely, okay? So if my people do elect to not go down my path, and they elect to choose the path of sin and unrighteousness, then when they pray and they seek my face after turmoil comes to them, after I put stress upon the earth, they're going to turn to me, but I'm not going to hear them because they chose to serve anti-God principles rather than godly principles. It was a choice we made. And so that kind of cemented it into my head after the election was, I didn't really care because I know whoever God leaves in there or puts in there would be who God wants in there so that he can direct uh, whatever his plan and purpose is for the end of the age, which we are now in and I'm going to prove it to you again. So conversely in Second Chronicles, it's if those people choose to go down the wrong path, then when they come to seek me, I'm not going to hear them. I'm not going to listen to their prayer. I'm not going to forgive their sins. Uh, they'll cry like a baby, I'm sure, and I will not step in, and I will not heal their land. So, America has chosen the party platform of Barack Obama and the Democrats, which include these things. They want to, and gee, Elizabeth Warren was pounding that home here in Massachusetts. I want it so, if you vote for me and you vote for Barack Obama, then you're going to have a senator in there, an extra one, maybe the deciding vote for the Supreme Court. We don't want to overturn Roe versus Wade, and we want to keep, we want to have women have their choice. Well, that sounds, you know, women should have their choice, and men should have their choice, and everybody should have their choice. Regardless of what God says, um, they want to keep abortion on demand, which means, here's what an abortion is. I don't want my child, I'm pregnant, so therefore I have the right to choose to cause a physician of some sort to remove, to take that baby's life from my womb and destroy it. So they use these little terms called fetuses. It's not really a living little baby that breathes, even though the ultrasound shows that. It's really uh, a fetus. It's like, oh yeah, I guess that's like plastic. It's not life. You know, we fall for those lies, and it's murder, plain and simple. So we elected somebody that's in tune with killing babies. Um, the Obama administration and the Democrats, and I'm, I'm not a Republican, I'm an independent, believe me. Uh, they want to pay for abortion on demand by funding Planned Parenthood. That's this path, that's their platform. Over here on the Romney side, the moral side, even if you will, I'm not saying he's a religious guy, but he says he is, but I know he's a moral guy. I'll give him 100% on morality. The moral issue was he didn't want to do fund Planned Parenthood. We chose to fund Planned Parenthood or to fund abortions. We say it's okay to do that. We the majority. I know you didn't, but the majority in America said, yeah, abortion's okay, we'll, we'll pay for it. You're going to pay for it because now President Obama and the Senate will figure a way through executive privilege or whatever to make this happen. Uh, they're going to make the law of the land to allow for homosexual marriages. Wait till I get into the Bible verses covering that. And you'll see why I know, and you do too, if you got half a brain, you'll see that we are in the end times. And then I'm going to explain exactly how this is all going to end. And when. Woohoo! Stay tuned. 
So they want to make the law of the land now to be homosexual marriages. The majority of people voted for President Obama and the new Democratic Senate with the plus three majority uh, vote that they added in already. So what we are saying to God is, look, we know what your book says, but we choose on our own to go down that path. Okay, we want to continue funding um, deficit spending. And that part there is okay. It's kind of immoral though, because God really says, oh no man, anything, and yet we're borrowing money from China so long as they uh, loan us money. And the Bible says clearly, time in and time out, when you borrow, you are a slave to your creditor. And so this is where we're heading. But we voted to go down that route. And we're funding deficits that contribute to these immoral lifestyles as part of that borrowing money to go and do wrong pathway stuff. Um, we're taxing those earning over 250000 Now, President Obama said, and the Democrats who ran, like Elizabeth Warren in Massachusetts, said, you know, I'm all for the middle uh, class, I want to tax the rich, which is okay, I'm not rich. And generally speaking, most people said, yeah, tax those bums. You know, when the leaves shake in the tree and, and fall, whatever's left over, you can only see that after it happens. So you are going to see exactly what's going to be left when the trees and the leaves are shaken and when the rich get taxed uh, to whatever percentage that President Obama and his Senate elect to do, and they will do it now, and then you think that the middle class is going to get a tax break. And there may be an announcement, oh, 20% tax for middle America. It's crap. Because with Obamacare, you wait to see how much tax you're going to have to pay. Wait to see how much your premiums are going to go up. But we did this. We did it to ourselves. Now, when we start crying out to the Lord, He's got to say, based on 2 Chronicles 7.14, look, you had your choice. You chose to go down that path, which is not my path. You chose homosexuality. You chose redefining marriage. You chose killing babies. You chose uh, legal in my state legalizing drug use. In fact, Massachusetts has just passed a law that says you can, if you have uh, the need of marijuana for medicinal purposes, you can grow the stuff yourself. I don't know where that's going to lead, but, you know, I'm sick, give me a note. Doctor gives me a note, I slip him five grand, I grow marijuana, I've got a permit for it, I sell the stuff out the back door to the kids in your high school. Yeah, well, how'd that happen? God can't hear you. You see what's going to happen? I'm just saying. Am I bitter about President Obama going in? I look, look in my eyes. No. Um... And my job is to follow his leadership, but I cannot follow his leadership when it defies or goes in opposition to God's rules. So if he says homosexual marriage, no. If he says abortions, no, not in my book. I'm not honoring that, can't do it. Uh, but if he creates laws, I have to abide by them so long as they do not interfere with or go contrary to God's laws because when it comes to God or oh man, I choose to serve God. Israel says that too and I want to get to that very important point soon, soon if I can. I'm only on page two. This might be one of those longer ones. I apologize. But it's important because, you know what? In the next four years, a lot of things are going to happen in front of your very eyes and you're going to, I hope you remember this video. And I hope you come back to the one that says, the elections of 2012. Now what? After the election. Because these things are going to unfold shortly. Uh, so in Massachusetts, they've allowed in, into law, in many other states, I guess, the use of medical marijuana. I subscribe to the notion of that. If somebody's in pain, like my brother Vern was, and had cancer, he smoked marijuana. And you know what? 
it helped the guy out. But he also had, he did it illegally. But the way they made this law is, he, my brother then could have gotten permission, legally, to grow his own. And then, who's to stop him from selling the stuff? I mean, it is tempting. So I think we're going to get bitten by that one, but we'll see. They also legalized um, suicide for the elderly in Massachusetts. And, you know, I've got a funny feeling that that's going to permeate throughout the United States. And everyone, I mean, the majority in Massachusetts said, yeah, if somebody's old and they want to die, then, uh, you know, let them uh, go get the prescription, 100 second all tablets, take the tablets apart, put them in the water, drink it, and see you later. And a physician doesn't have to be in their home, so, you know, if you go to grandma's house one day and you notice that she's been dead in the bed there for 10 or 15 days, well, the landlord upstairs starts going, Jeez, I don't know what's going on downstairs, but it can't be good. Then, this is legal now. Um, God used to say in his Bible, I give life, I take life, that's it. So mankind is saying, nah, we don't need you. We're going to take our own life. Um, is it right? Is it wrong? God says it's wrong, so um, we do it. I know this, when my mother was dying, she went into a hospital, they gave her hospice care, they uh, gave her uh, morphine <clears throat> to help ease that pain, and she really never had an ounce of pain, and within, I think, two weeks, she was dead. Now, based on this one here, she could have just gone and gotten a prescription and uh, used it or not, you know, you could sell a hundred pills to somebody else, I suppose. We're just going to pay for this stuff, but when the tree is shaken and the leaves are on the ground, that's the only way to find out what the result of our choices were when we want to, to go down this road, it, road and not down God's pathway that he outlined in this book. There are consequences for our actions. So, will God allow men and women to oppose his word? Absolutely. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1-9, through 9, he says this, this is coming to the end times, that you will see. He says, but mark this, check it off, mark it down. There will be terrible times in the last days. Yeah, but John, you know, we heard about the last days for 50 years of my life. Well, let's see what's going to happen in the last days and see if this has happened um, to this point 50 years ago. The answer is no. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. Well, what? People will be lovers of themselves. Well, they certainly are. Lovers of money. I mean, that's unbelievable today. Boastful. They'll be boastful. Hey, look at how good I am. They'll be proud. It's too proud to go and pray. They'll be abusive. Whew. How much abuse do we see in the school system today? How much abuse do we see on uh, child abuse? We read about it all the time. Uh, husbands beating their wives. Abuse, abuse, abuse. Well, in the end days, they're going to be abusive. I know when I was growing up, it might have happened here and there, but I, you know, maybe they swept it under the rug. I'm not sure. Maybe it was uh, different then. I don't know, but I do know this. Divorce wasn't like it is now. Abusiveness was not anywhere near like it is now. Let me continue. The Bible says they will be disobedient to their parents. I'll tell you what, I was never disobedient. If I was, I got the old spanking. But you can't do that now. So the kids are saying, hey, buzz off, ma. What do you know? And if you hit me, I'm calling the child services, and they'll take me out of here. Like, yeah. They'll be ungrateful, which they are. They'll be unholy, which they are. They will be without love, which they are. They'll be unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control. Sticking drugs in their arms like unbelievable. In fact, the self-control now is legalized. What? You want marijuana? Not a problem. Just tell the doctor you're sick. They'll be brutal. Again, we go back to brutality in school. Brutal emotional brutality. They'll be uh, not lovers of good, 
That's why we're going down that path and not that path. We voted for that. They'll be treacherous. They'll be rash. They'll be conceited. They'll be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They will have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Meaning this, oh yeah, I believe there's God. 97% of the people on the planet do. Yeah, I believe in God. Um, well, do you go to church? No, nah, I don't have to go to church. Do you worship God? No. Did you, do you know that his son Jesus is the only way to get into heaven? And uh, through salvation is the only way to keep yourself from going into the lake of fire? Eh. The Bible, <coughs> the Bible, it's an antique. It's, it's irrelevant. It's not, it's not up with today's times. It's not modern. This Bible tells me in Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 9, have nothing to do with those people. Now, I have to have to do with these people because God also tells me to obey those that have the rule over me, which is the government, but I also don't have to have anything to do with their immoral lifestyle. And the Bible continues on. They are the kind who worm their way into homes and gain control over gullible women. Hey, I didn't say it. God said it. Who are loaded down, these women, who are loaded down and swayed by all kinds of evil desires, and I'll get into that in a minute, that's true, always learning and learning and studying and trying to be swift and smart, trying to outsmart God and do things on their own, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. What is the truth? That we're sinners. What is the truth? That Jesus is the only one who died on the cross to save sinners from the lake of fire. He's the only way to get it to heaven. For nobody can see the Father but unless they go through him, 1 John 1, 14. Just as Moses was opposed by those who taught the opposite of God's truths, which is what they're teaching now and making law, so also these teachers in the last day will oppose the truth. That is, the TV evangelists, many of them, some of the pastors and preachers and rabbis in the churches, they're telling you, this is not, uh, this is not the Bible to read. This is uh, an antique. It's not for today. So they change God's word. They make this version, that version, another version that I spoke about last week. And they never end up, they actually change the wording in the Bible so that when you read it, it's like, you don't get it. They predicted this in, in uh, 2 Timothy for the end times. They are men, these men who preach this stuff, the untruths to you, are men of depraved minds who, as far as the faith is concerned, are rejected, rejected by God. He does not recognize them. You think they're out there preaching the truth. Oh, they got a, a collar on or whatever. They look like the clergy. They must be telling me the truth. No, God rejected them. They're not. They're teaching you untruths. But they will not get very far, the Bible says, because, as in the case of those men, their folly will become clear to everyone. I'm telling you this as a prediction now, in the next four years, you will see the folly of our voting. It will certainly manifest itself, and then you will be doing that crying out to God, saying, oh, we made a mistake, oh, 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 and he's going to say, I don't hear you, not because he's mean, but we, he gave us a choice, and we said, no, we want to vote for homosexual marriages, abortions, blah, 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 keep on going. <clears throat> so... We chose to go down this path, and we will be paying for that now, because these are the end times. So God allowed uh, this voting session to go through, and he put in the president who he wants in there to accomplish his plan and purpose, which will be to pull the curtain down on this age. We'll see what happens. Uh, so his wrath, his wrath, God's wrath for not following his pathway, I'm not saying for not voting for Romney, but for willingly voting and choosing to go down a known path of destruction, he's, his wrath will be poured out. Well, what is that going to look like? Romans chapter 1 tells us all about what God's wrath will look like. It says this in verses 18 to 22, uh, through 32, if you want to follow it with me, it says, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven, Against who? All the godlessness, that's that path, and wickedness, that's that path, of people who suppress the truth uh, by their 
by their wickedness. They're, they're saying, follow me down this road. I want to be your leader. And the majority of us said, okay, we'll follow you down that road, away from God, anti-God stuff. So the wrath of God being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness, since what may be known about God is plain to them, what God goes on to say here is, in my creation itself, life, trees, leaves, the veins in your rounds, the, the, the neurons that run your brain, all of this stuff, this life, uh, the magnificence of flowers, the, the design of nature itself, how come the sun doesn't get closer to the earth and burn it up? Uh, why is the earth placed exactly right? If it was a degree closer to the sun, we burn up. A degree this far away from the sun, we freeze to death. Why is it that nature itself, God says in Romans 1, uh, nature itself teaches us that the Almighty Creator can be clearly seen and being understood from what was made or created so that people you and me are without excuse. I highlighted it in red. We are without excuse. We know there's a God. We don't seek Him. We seek other pathways. We had our chance. We blew it. And people are without excuse. When you face God, and you will face God very, very soon, He's going to say to you, uh, you remember this book? Well, yeah, but I, uh, but, but, you're going to be without excuse. Did you accept my son as your savior? And Lord, uh, I told you that you should. It's in here. Well, no, we didn't kind of, didn't read that part. And my rabbi told me this, and my priest so said that. And the pastor said, yeah, it's a little different. And my Episcopal uh, woman pastor over there told me it's okay to, with the lesbian thing and the, the homosexuality and it's, it's all cool and I believe them and but you're without excuse it says because you as an individual you had the right to vote and you also have the right to go and seek out God's face like he suggested in 2nd Chronicles 7 14 and I'll continue for although they knew God they know there is a God they neither glorified God as God the Creator nor did they give him thanks for what he created and what he did in our lives and on our planet, for us. He gave all of this here that's on our planet that we can grow food, we have oil in the ground to sustain us throughout the end of time, which is coming soon, uh, to heat our homes and, and uh, light our stoves, if you will, or run our gasoline engines in the year 2012 and beyond. So he gave us all the stuff. Did we thank him for it? No. Nope. So their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened, which men's hearts are definitely darkened going down that path. They became fools and they exchanged the glory of the immortal God and replaced God calling themselves gods, little g. And that's exactly, actually there's whole religions that say that we become, we are little gods, we are, we are all gods and we're going to attain heaven through our own works and all this stuff. And people believe those lies. I'm continuing reading now. Therefore, God gave them, those people who stray from his path and go choose to go down this path, he gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts. I want to go do an abortion. I want to go uh, marry my boyfriend. I want to marry my girlfriend if I'm a girl. I want to uh, um, spend money for all kinds of illicit stuff, drugs, whatever, and make everything legal. So therefore, God gave them over to their sinful desires of their hearts. You wanted it, you got it. Um, he gave them their hearts over to their sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies one to another. I can tell you from uh, experience in having spoken with many people, especially the young kids today, whether they're in high school, junior high, college, makes no difference. I'm going to go shack up tonight with Joey, you know, friends with benefits, and tomorrow night I think it's Charlie, and uh, Monday night, I don't care if I get STDs, you take a pill. If I get pregnant, then no problem. I have the morning after pill. So I can go and, and to my heart's desire, do all this fornication stuff that God speaks 
against, yeah, but I got a pill now. So we're our own little gods doing our own little things, and we're telling God, take a hike, we don't need you. So he's telling you, you went down that path, you voted for it, you won it, you got it. Uh, they exchanged the truth of God for a lie. All the things that I told you are just plain lies. And they worshiped and served created things, that is each other, man, like little gods, rather than the creator himself, who is forever praised. And then that Bible verse says, amen. That means God is saying, so amen, which means so let it be. So let it be means it's coming. Because of this, I'm continuing to read, God gave these same people who want to go down that path and change all of God's laws to their own moral laws. God gave them over to shameful lusts. He's allowing us to do it. Even their women exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones. God is saying, your women are going to turn out loving women, loving women. Now, this was written thousands of years ago. Hey, how did God know this would happen in the end times? How does John Tyler figure we're in the end times? Because I'm reading the same thing I'm telling you. Your women will uh, leave the natural affection for a man and go toward other women. Is that happening today? You know, it used to be against the law to catch two guys in a bathhouse. Not anymore. Now, if you catch them, nothing you can do about it. Number one. Number two, it's now the law. If they love each other, they should get married. It's an abomination to God, and it has to be, because if I see two guys kissing on TV, I'm just telling you, I cannot look at it. I have to block my eyes like this. I can't. I can't it makes me sick to my stomach. So, if I'm a human, I can't. That's why the Bible says it's an abomination to God. But anyway, let me continue, because this was predicted thousands of years ago that in the end times, which we are in, folks, this will happen. Now you say, yeah, but so that's lesbianism. Okay. Well, let me continue reading. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust one for another, man for man. Homosexuality, it's called. Men, I'm still reading, men committed shameful acts with other men, God calls it shameful, and received in themselves the due penalty for that error. What does that mean? Well, you've heard of AIDS, you've heard of STDs, you've heard of all kinds of diseases that have come about as a result of lesbianism and homosexuality and promiscuousness with the STDs and the little uh, viral infections that are going around. It's like, take a pill, not a problem. I'm still reading. Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God that's found in this book, so God gave them over to a reprobate or a depraved mind to think that they can actually go down that path and get away with, without any um, punishment for that, without any uh, uh, consequence for going down that road. Not true. God's starting to bring down the hammers, which you will see in your next uh, four years. And you'll also start seeing stuff in the next before April. I'm going to explain that again to you in just a minute. They have become filled with every kind, this is the last days, people. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. Is that today's people? How many times have I heard this? That, ah, John, the earth is going to hell in the handbasket. Everything is upside down. What used to be right is wrong. What used to be wrong is right. What's going on? This is predicted. They are all gossipers, slanderers, God-haters. We don't need God. We're not a Christian nation anymore, in fact. We're, uh, we don't need God. For what? Get God out of our system. In God we trust. Why? Well, get that off the coins. What? One nation under God? Ah, get rid of that stuff. We're going to suffer the consequence. They are insolent, arrogant, boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. Ever watch Criminal Minds? You want to see some ways to do evil? Watch that show. 
<clears throat> they disobey their parents. Gee, really? They have no understanding. How about this? No fidelity. That's why, <laughs> look, folks, this was written thousands of years ago. No infidelity. It's going to happen in the end days. Infidelity. No love, no mercy. What? The guy wronged me? Nah, that's it. Throw him in jail. Uh, kill him. Whatever. Although they know God's righteous decree, they know God's words, they see God in nature, although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but they also approve of those who practice them. I didn't write that. It's in the Bible. We approve by voting of those who practice those anti-God things, abortion, homosexuality, uh, changing the definition of marriage, dope uh, dealing and uh, consuming, whatever. Hence, the vote for everything that again is against God and His teachings, we did by our own free will and our own free uh, volition. So therefore, if there is a consequence coming, unfortunately, we have to pay for that. Now, so what comes next, according to the Bible, that is? Well, as I've stated in many, many lessons, the Bible tells us that the next event to unfold is going to be, and I'll give you the quick history because many of you who know me have already heard this in other messages, but the very next event to unfold is that there must be a temple built on Mount Zion in Jerusalem and that will bring the curtain down so that when you see what I'm about to tell you happen, and I've said it before, but it bears, it's worth repeating because now after the election, now that we have chosen to not go down this moral path, but to go down the immoral path, then Second Chronicles 7.14 will kick in and God will not hear our prayers when he begins to bring down his wrath upon us. So let me go to Isaiah the prophet. He lived in the year around 760 B.C. Isaiah, Old Testament prophet. And he prophesied something that will happen way off in the future, like now. What did he say? Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 and 3 says this. And it shall come to pass, it shall happen. When? In the last days. And I underlined it that the mountain of the Lord's house, that is Mount Zion, shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow to that holy mountain. That is going to happen very soon. I'm going to tell you how. And the Bible keeps saying in verse 2 in Isaiah chapter 2, And many people shall go and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. The house of the God of Jacob is the holy temple. There isn't one there yet. So, but it says many people are going to go and say, Hey, come to Jerusalem, come up to the holy temple, see the Lord Jesus as he reigns there as king of the earth. When will that happen? Stay tuned. I'm just still reading the prophecy part. And God will teach us his ways from the temple in Mount Zion that's not there yet. And we will walk in his paths of righteousness at that point. For out of Zion, that is Mount Zion, where the Holy Temple is, shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord Jesus from Jerusalem. This is predicted by Isaiah the prophet. Again, this implies that, as Jesus pointed out, I am the Messiah. I will come. I will rule the earth. Now, here's what takes place. When there is no holy temple on Mount Zion. I've said this before, so I have to say it quickly now before you turn me off. Because others keep coming here to YouTube and they, they will see this, and especially when it happens soon. I would say before April of 2013, you will see Israel do a preemptive strike on the nation of Iran. Why? Because now that they, they were waiting too for the election. How will America choose? Will they put in Romney, who's a friend of Israel, uh, and a friend of Netanyahu in Israel, or Obama, who uh, basically is, he'll say he's the friend of Israel. He's not. 
He's snubbed Netanyahu several occasions, and he's just not. And Israel says that President Obama and his cronies want to actually take the land from Israel and actually give it over to the Arabs. I didn't say it. I'm not hypothesizing here. I'll read it to you in just a minute if you want to stay tuned. Because if you stay tuned, you're going to see when it happens, you'll say, I knew I heard it somewhere, and you're going to hopefully come back here and review this, and then you're going to click on that salvation link below or here on YouTube, and you're going to say, I better go and find out who, uh, how to be saved and know that I'm going to heaven. Because this stuff is unfolding right in front of your eyes in the next four years. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you. Okay, so the implication here is Jesus, here's what's going to happen. The Israel will do the preemptive strike on Iran. Israel will then tell all the Arabs, get off Mount Zion, get out of Jerusalem, and get out of Israel. The Arabs will flee because of the devastation that will take place in Iran. Israel is not going to wait for the United States now after the election because they don't trust President Obama as far as they can throw him. And so they're feeling like, uh-oh, we're, we're all alone now. Whatever action we take, we better plan now and we better take it soon. That's why I say probably before April of 2013, you will read about this in your paper and see it on TV and you'll see the devastation and then you're going to see Israel kick all the Arabs out of Israel and Jerusalem in particular and off Mount Zion where they control where the Holy Temple is going to be built. Let me continue quickly because it's important. Um, so remember, there is no Holy Temple there now, so something has to happen to get the Temple built. And I just told you how that is going to happen. Um, the, oh, the part about Isaiah predicting that um, Jesus is going to come and control or be king of, of king in Jerusalem working out of the Holy Temple is all true. But So the Jews are going to kick the Arabs out of Mount Zion and out of Israel. Then they're going to start building the temple. <clears throat> I think that's going to take about three, three and a half years. That will put you into maybe, uh, what, 2015, 2016, somewhere in that when you see the temple finally built. Then the Arabs have already signed prior to this, they, they and President Obama now and the United Nations will sign a peace treaty with Israel. Hey, we're not going to touch you. The Arabs are going to stay over there in their land. You go, go and feel free to be free. And peace, peace, peace. And the Bible does say everyone will be crying peace, peace, and then will come sudden destruction. Here's how it unfolds. Not because I said so. It says so in Luke chapter 21. But anyway, what happens is, now the temple is built. Jerusalem is surrounded at that point by all those Arabs who broke the peace treaty. They're all armed with as much weaponry as they can possibly get. And their intent is to do what President Ahmadinejad, he's the catalyst for all this, he's the president of Iran. And he says, and I quote, We, Islam, will kill the Jews and drive them into the sea. Okay, Israel knows that. The Arab world knows that. Islam knows that. President Ahmadinejad has declared that, both in the United Nations, over here in New York, when he was here, and every time he's here, and from his own country, from his bully pulpit. We're going to kill the Jews and drive them into the sea. They don't deserve to live. They don't deserve to have that land. We're taking it away, blah, 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 blah. All predicted in the Bible. How did God know this thousands of years ago? So Israel is threatened every day of their life with this fanatic known as Ahmadinejad, who is driven on purpose. It's a, it's a ideological thing with him. It's his, it's his fundamental belief. You have to understand this that he is the one to usher in the 12th Imam, known as uh, Al-Mahdi, which is the Jewish equivalent of the Islamic equivalent of the Messiah, the 12th Imam. And Ahmadinejad truly believes it's his job to bring him in. But first, violence must be committed upon the earth, according to their um, Torah. Uh, it's not Torah, jeez. Their... Uh, 
the Islamic Bible, it slips my mind, so the Quran, sorry. Um, so his job is to usher in this holy one, the 12th Imam, the Messiah for Islam. And to do that, he's got to kill the Jews and kick them out of the, it's their holy land too, you know, Mount Zion in Jerusalem and all of Jerusalem. They own it in their mind. So they got to kick the Jews out of there. And the Jews know it, so they're threatened every day. Uh, here's the day after election article out of um, Israel. Headlines, Obama's re-election upsets the ruling Likud in Israel. Those are the powers in Israel. Quote, Mr. Netanyahu has a had a difficult relationship with Mr. Obama during his first term. Mr. Obama refused to be pushed by Israel on taking action against Iran. And the White House was miffed by Israeli policy on settlements in the occupied West Bank. In September, Mr. Obama declined to meet Mr. Netanyahu of Israel during his visit to New York for the United Nations General Assembly session. So there has been bad blood, if you will, between the Obama, between President Obama period and Netanyahu or Israel. Therefore, Israel feels, again, that they're alone, uh, they're going to have to protect themselves against a nuclear strike, so that's why I say before April, I believe, they're going to do their preemptive strike. They can make a serious on the turmoil, they have some good airways to get over to Iran and do their thing. So logic dictates that if the Arabs are all kicked out of Israel, especially off Mount Zion and out of Jerusalem, and after this devastation that's going to happen to Iran, now the mountaintop is clear. The, the Jews are in control again, and they will decide, now is the time to go build that temple. I'm going to read to you the truth about that temple and what Israel feels about it, so that you don't think I'm making something up, uh, or that the Bible, Jesus himself made something up. It's happening right before your eyes and mine. So, they're going to start building the temple. Now, here's what Israel says uh, of Obama, the United Nations and the European Union, right out of their newspapers today. The answer from the Temple Mount and Land of Israel Faithful Movement, to get it, the Temple Mount, uh, to the harsh pressure coming from the United States President Obama, the United Nations and the European Union, enemies of Israel and the entire world, take your hand, this is their message to Obama, the UN, and the uh, European Union. Take your hands off Jerusalem, Israel obeys only the Almighty God of Israel, and not what you people say. They further state this, in a time when the Arab Islamic world is fighting against Israel with war, terror, and violence, so often with the support of the President of the United States and the European Union with the purpose of removing Israel from the land of the covenant between Abraham and Israel and to make Jerusalem an Arab Islamic capital, that's the intent of Obama, they say, and the European Union and the United Nations, the Temple Mount and the Land of Israel faithful movement stands unflinchingly on the front line to protect Jerusalem from the evil and anti-godly campaign. I'm not saying this, folks. This is coming right out of Israel. That's why I know that this Bible squares away with what's going on in the world today and with the headlines that you're reading. Now, in particular, after the election, because everything is in place. It's re it's, we've made our choice. It's all there. It's in place. The temple, I'm continuing to read from... Uh, them, the Israel, the Temple Mount Faithful Movement, they call themselves, was created in the year 1967, that was right after the uh, Six Day War, Arab-Israeli conflict, they call it, by the God of Israel as his vessel to remove the foreign anti-God, this is what Israel is intent to do. Again, Ahmadinejad has, he's an ideologue, his faith in Allah, dictate that he remove the Jews, kill them, enslave them, captivate them, whatever he's got to do to them, get rid of them. 
That's his ideology. Israel's ideology is to remove the foreign, anti-godly, Arab-Islamic occupation from his holy temple mount in Jerusalem and to rebuild, listen to this, and their intent, I'm reading it to you out of Israel, and their intent is to rebuild the holy temple of God, making Jerusalem again as it was in the time of King David, during biblical times, the eternal capital of God and the people of Israel. This is coming out of Israel. That's their intent. That's their, it's not a philosophy. It's inbred in them. This is their core soul belief. The Temple Mount Faithful Movement is also calling the people of Israel to be a holy nation. You know, turn to God, folks. It's time. That's what they're saying. That's what I'm telling you, too, by the way. To be a holy nation, a kingdom of priests, and a light unto all the other nations. Exodus 19, 5, 5, and 6. They quote, As God chose and ordained Israel to be a biblical nation with a biblical mission and to make Jerusalem the godly focus of all the earth exactly as it was prophesied by God. And they quote from Isaiah, where I read to you earlier, that Isaiah predicted that in the end times, a holy temple will be built on Mount Zion. They say it, I say it, the Bible said it 2,000 years ago, so you can either believe it, that path, or choose, by your vote, to go down that path and stay on this path and just not listen to me or anything that God say it. And hey, it's okay, cheers. Okay, John, know it all, so when will all this take place, you ask? Uh, when, and you'll say, yeah, sure, or if, when you see Israel devastate Iran, when you see them kick all the Arabs out of Israel, and when you see the Holy Temple starting to be built, you have about, in my opinion, I'm not exactly positive, but I'm going to say a time frame would be you have about three and a half years to get yourself together, click on that link below, get your eternal destiny arranged with God, because you're going to go meet your maker. Why? Because I'm philosophizing here, or I'm theorizing, or I'm some prophet. No, I'm not a prophet. I'm just reading what the prophets have told you and me if we want to get into that book and listen. So as this unfolds, remember, Israel will do the preemptive strike. Israel will throw the Arabs out. Israel will start building a temple. Three and a half years later, the temple will be completed. This is when bad stuff happens. Good stuff for Christians. Bad stuff for those of you who are not, who have not clicked on the link and made that determination. Let me tell you what happens when you ask me, then what? The temple is now built. Now what? And you're going to see it in your lifetime now, and so am I. All right, there's the temple. It's built. Everybody's at peace. Yay. Everything is good. You know, progress in the world. We're all making out good. Obama kept his promise. The economy's chugging along because we're supposed to have about three and a half years of uh, actually um, time of prosperity before all hell breaks loose. Okay, uh, so let me go to the then what after this temple is done. Here we go. Luke chapter 21. Uh, it says this. In when you shall see Israel, excuse me, Jerusalem, encompassed about with armies, with their weapons, ready to take it over, then know that the desolation, that means the temple, see, they don't like that temple being built because that's a Jewish temple. They want their holy mosque on the other side of the the uh, Temple Mount, uh, El Aqsa Mosque, that's there now. They want this to be controlled by Arabs and Islam. And here's this Jewish holy temple. They plan to go in there, kill the Jews, captivate the Jews when the temple is done because it, it infuriates them. They break their peace treaty with Israel. They surround Jerusalem with countless armies with weapons. And I don't know how, but Israel must be, with the peace treaty, you know, denuke, or maybe send their nukes over here to the U.S. I don't know what's going to happen. I, 
Bible doesn't know, doesn't say about, not that he doesn't know, but doesn't say about what's going to happen. All I can tell you is this, the Arabs will break, and so will Obama and the United Nations, break the peace treaty with Israel, they'll surround Jerusalem, and they're there to, to uh, kill them, just as the Roman soldiers did, by the way, in 70 AD when they destroyed the first temple on August 4th. So, Jesus said in Luke 21, when you shall see Israel now encompassed around about with armies, know that the desolation, that is, of that temple is at hand. Then, let them which are in Judea, that's the area surrounding Jerusalem, flee to the mountains, and let them who are in the middle of Jerusalem depart out of it rapidly. Get out before they kill you and take you captive. And let them... Uh, let not them that are in the countries enter thereinto. Let nobody come in. Everybody that's in, get out, because devastation is at hand. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. God's going to bring the hammer down right now. When you see the temple being built, and Israel is surrounded by the Arabs once again, and they break the treaty, all hell is about to break loose. Let me continue in Luke. 2,000 years ago written. Woe unto them that are with child and so forth. And he's talking about great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall, they the Israelites, the Jews, shall fall by the edge of the sword and they shall be led away uh, into captivity once again. They've always been led away into captivity by somebody. Here it comes again, my Jewish friends. Um, sorry, but your God said that's what's going to happen. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down by these Gentiles. That means anybody that's not a Jew. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That is, uh, fulfilled already. And when the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled means when God comes, when Jesus comes back, takes his saints out of here, it's done. The time of the in other words, the good news of the gospel went to the Jews first, they rejected it, and then it went to the Gentiles. Well, that's going to culminate when this temple is built, surrounded by the Arabs once again, and um, Jesus says, I'm coming back, you're going to see the Son of Man in the clouds, and he's going to rapture or take away his saints out of the, the earth. And then... But for the next three and a half years, during the last half of this great tribulation period, spoken about in Revelation in the Bible, all hell breaks loose. <clears throat> and there shall be signs in the sun and the moon. By the way, this is in Luke, over in Joel chapter 2, verse 28 and forward through 32, I think. You could skip over there if you're a Bible thumper like me and read that. That's talking about this time right here. And there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of all nations with perplexity the seas and the waves will be roaring men's hearts will fail them for sheer fear and for looking after those things that are coming on the earth here comes the Lord they told us about it John Tyler told us about it we didn't believe it ah it's happening now their hearts will fail them out of fear because they know that the wrath of God is coming now and they know they're going to have to face that same God and they're going to have to explain why they took that path and refused to take that path when they had the chance. We might have bought a little more time. That's all I was kind of hoping for. Men's hearts will fail them and for looking after those things which are coming of the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then they shall see. See, this never happened before. When Israel was surrounded Jerusalem back in 70 AD. This didn't happen before. Verse 27, Luke chapter 21. And they shall see the Son of Man, Jesus, coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draws nigh. You're going to be taken out of here if you clicked on the link, if you know you're going to heaven beyond any shadow of a doubt, if you trusted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you repented of your sins, if you asked the only one, Jesus, who died on the cross for your sins to forgive you, then He will forgive you and you will inherit eternal life. Otherwise, 
Your punishment when you face God will be the lake of fire. Let me continue. And finally, with this, the, the uh, Temple Mount organization wrote this in their paper, and I have to share it with you because it's unfolding right now, folks. This is the day after election, they say. It's uh, found at www.templemountfaithful.org slash articles. But anyway, just go there and you can read all the articles you want about what's going on. But in there it says this, and G slash D. See, they can't spell out God. They can't say the word. They just say G slash D. The go well, I'll read it to you. The God and people of Israel, together with the Temple Mount and Land of Israel Faithful Movement, declare today that U.S. President Barack Hussein Obama to the European Union and to the United Nations and to the Arab and Muslim enemies of Israel who conspired together to take Jerusalem and the land of Israel away from the people of God, you have no right in Jerusalem and the Holy Land of Israel. You have no chance and no way, which I agree to based on the Bible, to take Jerusalem from the God and people of Israel or to stop her rebuilding and her glorification in honor of our great God. Rebuilding what? That temple that John Tyler kept telling you is going to happen. Jerusalem, the holy temple mount of God, and the land of Israel will never fall again. Together with our almighty God, we shall never allow it to happen. Do you understand that? Not out of theology, their sole desire not to be ever threatened, not to have their land taken. It's holy to them. It's holy to the Arabs. Conflict time. God said this would happen. The Jews will prevail. Hate to tell you my Arab friends there, but Jerusalem, Jerusalem will become, this is their, I'm still reading, Jerusalem will become the focus and even the capital of the whole earth which is true according to the Bible, only when all the nations will recognize Jerusalem as the eternal capital of God and the people of Israel. That part there is not quite true. Then will, but they believe it. Then will come a real godly peace to the entire world and the exciting end time vision of Isaiah will become a reality in our generation. Israel was chosen by God and he gave her the holy land of Israel in order to be a holy nation, a kingdom of priests, and a light to all the nations. Exodus 19.6. That is exactly right. And to build Jerusalem and the holy temple to be the holy dwelling place of God so that many people shall go and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of God of Jacob and he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths. This is exactly what I told you that Jesus said. That he is coming back after the rapture, he goes to heaven for three and a half years while God allows total wrath to happen upon the people of the earth who did not accept his son, who chose the wrong path. Now they're going to eat it. I hate to say it that way, but God's going to kill one third of the population of the earth by a disease that's unbelievable, I guess. That's what he says. He's going to kill and destroy one-third of the vegetation on the earth and one-third of all the things that are in the sea. That's just for openness. So Jesus said the same thing. Then Jesus is going to come back to this earth on Mount Zion in Jerusalem where that holy temple is, where it was desecrated by the Arabs. He's going to cleanse the temple, which he can do with his voice, like he created the earth, and then he's going to dwell in that temple for 1,000 years, as he says he will do. And then he says he's going to chain the devil in the pit of hell for the 1,000 years. And there will be total, absolute peace and tranquility on this earth for those 1,000 years. Now, after he takes his saints to heaven in the rapture, he's coming back with those saints, with the indestructible bodies, by the way so that he may rule and be the Messiah, the king over the nation, ruling out of the temple of God in Jerusalem on Mount Zion. This is going to happen. Some of you will not see it. Those who he took to heaven with him in the rapture will see it because you'll be back here uh, spending your thousand years with 
the Lord Jesus as your king. Whether you're a Jew or whatever, as long as you have met the salvation requirements, found on the link below, by the way. So, Jesus said exactly that stuff. And then, after the thousand years happens, everybody gets taken to heaven. Uh, the Christians, I won't say, I hate using the word Christians, because that means non-Jew. Those who trusted Jesus as Lord and Savior, and asked for forgiveness of sins, and who met the qualifications of what's on the link below, go off to a banquet in heaven, everyone else gets judged by the law, the law of Moses. Have you ever sinned? Uh, uh, yeah, I, uh, did you trust my son as your savior? Uh, no. Uh, and then he's going to have his angels escort all of those during the thousand years that I plan to be operating out of Jerusalem with the Lord. Everyone else that did not is going into that lake of fire after that thousand years. Meanwhile, they're just going to be in this place called Hades, which is a holding place for people, spirits who die without Christ, uh, without accepting Him as Lord and Savior. Hades is here on the earth. Um, it, it's just not going to be fun for you, folks. So, here we go. America has willingly chose to disobey 2 Chronicles 7.14, Go down the moral path. We had a shot. We voted no. Let's take the immoral path with the immoral leadership. And we're going to suffer the results of that. And you will see them unfold before um, you arrive. So now it's time for you to vote again, folks. Vote on clicking on the link below or saying, nah, I think I'll stay on this path for a while. Your choice. Um, I don't mean that to sound like I'm a wise guy, but it really is. I don't know how many times I've been saying this, but... You know in your heart it is your choice. You know it's probably time to vote on going to seek out God's face like he said in 2 Chronicles 7.14. Turn from our wicked ways. Ask him for forgiveness. Um, ask him to point you for the truth if you don't believe anything I'm saying, and he will. And then I think you'll be all right. And meanwhile, I'll see you guys back here next week, hopefully. Uh, See you again. But it was election time, and I thought, you know what? Now's the time. It was impressed upon me to give this little message however long it took.